Oh, this is we're on stage. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. I hope those of you who were able to attend the keynote enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Josh Tappen from the Seesaw team, and welcome to Rekindling the Seesaw Spark, Igniting Teacher Excitement. During this session, we encourage you to take notes, share insights, and be active while learning. Uh, remember, you'll get points on the leaderboard for being active during this session and future sessions. On the top right, you'll see the chat for sharing and connecting. Next to that is the Q&A for asking presenter-specific questions. So myself and Chris, my colleague, will be monitoring that Q&A throughout, and we'll ask some of those questions to our presenters toward the end. Uh, feel free to ask questions anytime. We'll answer them at the end if time allows. And there's also a tab called Handouts where any session resources will be shared. If you like closed captions, select the CC in the top right corner and choose your preferred language. Please stick around until the end of this session to get your PD certificate for the Swag Gear giveaway. Now, I will pass it over to our wonderful presenters for rekindling the Seesaw Spark, igniting teacher excitement. Thanks again for attending Connect. All right. Hi, everyone. Like Josh said, this is Rekindling the Seesaw Spark, Igniting Teacher Excitement. I am, oh, sorry, I am Ashley Marker. I am a digital learning coach in Kentucky. I'm also a wife, professional toddler chaser, full-time job, um, coffee, crafting, and baking obsessed. Hi, I'm Stephanie Planholder. I'm so excited to see all you guys this morning. It's like all over the place. I saw Bermuda and like capital letters and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, I am a digital learning coach at the elementary level along with Ashley. We are teammates, um, a wife, a mom, a book lover at heart and huge Swifty over here. That's a picture of me from seeing her in London. I would talk to you about it all day, but we're here for Seesaw and a football lover both before and after the Kelsey era. Thank you so much. But there won't be an after because he's staying. <laughs> all right. So today we are so excited that you joined us because we are really excited about rekindling the Seesaw Spark in our district and helping you to do the same. I see someone from the UK. Hey, Adam, I'm a huge <laughs> tea lover now. Um, join us as we share some innovative strategies employed in our district to reignite teacher enthusiasm for Seesaw. We also want to help you discover practical approaches and success stories that have sparked excitement, ensuring a dynamic and effective integration of Seesaw for your school, your classroom, and your district. All right, so we want to start us off with just a little icebreaker. So we found this question and we loved it. So if you could just type your answer in the chat. If animals could talk, which one do you think would be the funniest? What do you think, Steph? Definitely birds. They see all the things. <laughs> Sloth. That's the one I mentioned when we were talking about it. Sloth. Also, I saw on there, hey, go Bills. We support all the teams here. I, <laughs> I love all the teams. I agree. Football's life. Dogs. That's a good yes, one. Dogs for These sure. are all some great, Lambs. great I love answers. It. Giraffes, meerkats. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So um, today we're going to talk to you about all the things, but we, whenever we come in front of our, you know, our friends out on Seesaw, we want to make sure that we tell you why, what, and how, because we want you to walk away today with some actionable steps that you can immediately implement because we've sent all kinds of trainings before and we're like, you know what, we want to walk away with some goodness. So we're going to give you that today and we're going to talk about the why, the how, and the what of how we have reignited the Seesaw Spark in our district. So first let's tell you a little bit about our why. So in our district, we had some low usage numbers with Seesaw and Seesaw was just a tool that we knew we loved and we needed to figure out why that was. Um, we also had some pandemic fatigue and I'm sure you saw that in your districts as well. When teachers came back in the classroom, they were apprehensive to use technology, really, which was really hard as a digital learning coach to get that back back at the forefront. And then also we had a lot of wasted planning time. Teachers were trying to pull resources on their own and put things together um, when really Seesaw has all of those resources for us. And then our what. So as a district, we are required to purchase a tool that we use for non-traditional instruction. So those days that we have weather or illness that our students are learning from home. So Seesaw actually ended up being that tool 
And if we were going to use Seesaw anyways, and we needed to be prepared with non-traditional instruction, we wanted to make sure that our teachers knew just how robust Seesaw was. We also loved that Seesaw provided standards aligned lessons that were built from their curriculum people. So we could trust that it was a great resource. Also, we love their assessment features. That one is one that our teachers have really, really just gone crazy about. It's such a great addition. And then our biggest one this year that we've talked a ton about is data tracking. It's always data, data, data. And a lot of the new updates that Seesaw has made has primarily been our focus. So I see in the chat a lot of you talking about your instructional coaches and tech coaches. Digital learning coach is kind of our wheelhouse as well, but we were former elementary school teachers. So we see you, we hear you, we feel you. And we had to figure out how. How could we take all this knowledge of what we were seeing with Seesaw in our district and really reignite that flame? Because we saw the value. We knew how amazing this tool could be for our teachers, the time it could save, the benefits. And we were like, okay, we've got to make this happen. How are we going to do it? And so the first thing we did was gather feedback. And we're going to show you a little bit about what we did in terms of gathering feedback. Then we're going to show you a little bit about how we started showcasing Seesaw in our weekly emails that we send out. We're going to talk to you a little bit about the professional learning. So we have PD there, Offered Live PD. We're going to interchangeably use two things for you, professional development and professional learning. So if you hear us say PD or PL, that's what we're referring to, professional learning. And then we hosted a district workshop focused solely on Seesaw. We're going to tell you a little bit about that. And then also how we have networked with our special education instructional coaches as well as our English language learner coaches and teachers to support them with building access and equity throughout our district using Seesaw. And then finally, how we support our stakeholders with Seesaw. So hold on tight. It's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I'm pretty excited for you to hear what we've been doing here in Bullitt County. All right. So we're going to start with gathering feedback. Um, Stephanie and I service 13 schools. So while we would love to get face-to-face -face opinions from every single one of those teachers, it's really jo just not feasible for us. And the fastest way to collect that feedback is through sending out a Google form. So that's what we started with doing. You'll notice if you go to look at this in the handout section that this is actually Seesaw's old logo. So we've been on this journey for just a little bit. And we just really wanted to see before we jumped in with our plan where we were as a district. So this was sent out to all of our teachers, K to five, and you can see the questions on the left. So pretty generic. How often are you utilizing Seesaw in your instruction? How comfortable are you with utilizing Seesaw in your classroom? We always like to know who our experts are and who feels really confident because we like to tap into those resources because we like to collaborate. And then if you'd be interested in sharing more about how you use Seesaw in your classroom, would you be interested in learning more about Seesaw? And then our last question was, what information about Seesaw would be helpful for you? So just something that would help guide us as we grow and develop as a district. So depending on where you are in your Seesaw journey, whether you're someone who has the ability to bring it to your school or your district or your classroom, one of the main things that we value is taking feedback from our teachers and our instructional support staff. We need to know what they need from us so that we can best create this journey for them. So a lot of our steps involved analyzing the data to see what do they need and how can we take this further into our district. So first things first, we do want to acknowledge that prior to this school year, we were a K through two seesaw usage only. We would offer access K through five for our SPED and our EL students, but we mainly focus on it being a K through two instructional tool. Going into the 24-25 school year, we're super excited to be able to offer it K through five, but at this time the data was taken, that wasn't an option. But basically what we did is we said, how comfortable are you with it and how can we best support you? Because once we had an in with how to support them, we ran with it and then we started building things. Also, as Ashley mentioned, we started finding experts, people who already felt confident, who already love Seesaw and were like, hey, teachers love to hear from other teachers about awesome things they're doing 
we need you. And a lot of them were very eager to help. We have Seesaw Pioneers and ambassadors in our district. And we're like, we're going to we're going to need your help. And they were eager to support. All right. In our second way that we gathered feedback. So EOY just stands for end of year feedback. So Stephanie and I implemented a lot of different things in our district last school year. So following that year, we just wanted to make sure that we got feedback from our teachers. So you'll see that a lot of these questions are similar to the first survey that we sent out because we wanted to be able to directly analyze that data and correlate um, with comparing what we had implemented. So it just says, how often do you use Seesaw in your instructional experiences? We're hoping that number went up. Um, how comfortable are you with utilizing Seesaw in your classroom and instruction? Would you be interested in learning more? And then again, what information would be helpful? So again, we just want a path for us to take as we begin planning over summer and heading into the next school year. And once again, we we looked, we looked at the data. So a lot of our job is to look at the data and decide what do our teachers need and then provide that. We do a lot of professional learning and we were super excited to see what things they're interested in. Assessment building, and standards-based grading is really popular in our district. And so we were like, okay, this is stuff that they need. Let's get it in their hands. Um, we're also really excited because this year we're going to be moving to that K-5 format. And we could see how are our K-2 teachers using it so that we could start showing it to our 3-5 through teachers even better. And as you can see on there, we already, we already have people that are happy to help us in implementing this and being those ambassadors and those leaders from within their own school. Ashley and I service 13 elementary schools. So we divide and conquer, we tag team a lot. And so if we can get some in-house experts, it's gonna make all the difference because people are gonna go to them and know and trust them and that we can all work cohesively. All right, so the next way that we reach our teachers is through our weekly email. So again, we can't have all of those conversations every week. So we started sending a weekly email, usually on Fridays, just to kind of wrap up the week and give them any important information that we need to send out. Instead of bombarding them with sending emails, you know what a teacher inbox looks like. We take that one chance to just say anything important. So we know that Seesaw is important in our district. So we have actually given Seesaw its own little section. And there in that section, we give Seesaw updates. So anything that Seesaw sends us, we also feature our top users because as district administrators, we get that data and we were like, well, we're just looking at it, but what if we share it out and use it? We also share any Seesaw strategies, whether that's from them or from any classroom visits that we do. And then you'll hear us mention this again, but the webinars, the webinars are phenomenal and we're obsessed. So we make sure to feature those as well. So we're going to share a couple of things that we pulled directly from our emails. And so Ashley and I have to create that weekly email and we share these updates. So you're going to see we often share what's going on in the library. So what's going on with like the monthly feature collections, the classroom dailies are a big hit around here. Um, and then also special events because a lot of our teachers need like a tangible resource. They've got that whole learning library, a curriculum library they can pull from. And these are quick little reminders of like, hey, this is there in Seesaw. And we just wanna make sure we keep reminding them. We keep showing it to them because the more they see it, the more they are reminded of it. Anything that you kind of keep talking about or keep showing, people are starting, they get curious, right? They're like, hey, you know, I've heard you mention Seesaw a lot of times. Like what's going on with that? <laughs> I use that in the pandemic and I, you know, like tell me more and they start getting excited. So we just keep putting it right in front of their face. We're like, Hey, it's here. K through five. If you want to access it, you want to put your hands on it. You want to talk about it. We will help you. Um, we showcase the webinars all the time. I am like the webinar guru. <laughs> I just fangirled over Chris a minute ago because he's like the podcast guy. And I was like, you're a celebrity. Um, because when we go to their station and find these webinars and these podcasts, and these trainings, it helps us because then we can see different ways that we can help our teachers with, with the tools that Seesaw provides. Um, also, the highlight feature was a game changer in our district for student-led conferences and family conferences. So we just want to make sure our teachers know, hey, this is going on. And if you need to know more, you know exactly where to come find it. 
We also highlighted our top users. So I'm going to need some hearts or smiles or confetti if you like to be celebrated. Because I like to celebrate. I've been celebrating all summer. We'll talk more about that later. But <laughs> we like to celebrate our top users all the time. Um, when we started doing this, we literally just made this graphic. We popped it in our weekly email. And people were like, wait. How come you're the top user? What are you doing? How are you using Seesaw? And it created a spark, friends. And when you have a spark, you got to flame those fumes. You got to keep, you know, helping that fire to grow. And so what we have done is we've just highlighted, like, these are our top users in the district. These are top people in your school that are using Seesaw a lot. If you have questions, go hang out and go talk to them. And then those people come to us and like, hey, all these people are asking me about Seesaw and the national are like, jackpot. <laughs> and so then we start reaching out saying, hey, we heard you're interested in Seesaw. Let us talk to you about it. Um, we've even talked this year about doing even a little prize, some Seesaw swag, because people like to be acknowledged. Our educators are working tirelessly and it's our job to kind of build them up and showcase the great things they're doing. So this was just one little teensy way that we could just say, hey, you're doing a great job. And we noticed this one makes me laugh. <laughs> so Ashley is the neutral to my neon. I am very sparkly and colorful and Ashley is beautifully neutral. <laughs> she loves her neutral tones. And so the other example was from her email. And this is from my email. We share a lot of the same things, but mine's usually in purple because it's my favorite color. Thank you, Seesaw. Um, so we share strategies because not only should, are we sharing like who's using it and how they're using it, but we also want to say, like, here are some strategies that you can go implement immediately in your classroom, because we always live in the mindset of like, let's work smarter and not harder because our educators don't have time. Right. They don't have time. And we want to help them to streamline the process with a tool that's this effective. Um, so I think that's a, another thing we really try to help our teachers with is say, like, hey, this tool is amazing. It's going to save you time. It's going to make your workload easier. Um, sometimes it's just that learning curve to get used to, but on here we highlighted like now's the perfect time to explore how Seesaw can help with your family teacher conferences. Um, you can do, and then the highlight tool was huge for us. We're a district that really focuses on a portrait of a learner or like a graduate profile type competency based thing. So having a way for students to showcase their top work for exhibitions and project based learning was perfection. It's been a hit. And then in our weekly email, we also highlight webinars. Also, now is the time to address that we notice as we put it on here that we had a typo on our flyer that we've shared out a million times. So if you see that, we're just going to ignore it for the time being, but yes. no time like now. But we also use our weekly email as a chance to highlight the webinars. But like Stephanie said, we like to put our stuff in like a million different places and kind of put it in their face because if they can see it, they're going to be interested. So you see on that left-hand side, you can really see how different our emails are based on our personalities. But you can see that we highlight the webinars within our weekly technology email. But then on the right-hand side is also a link to a flyer, one that we share out with any upcoming professional learning. And also this year, it's worth mentioning, we also added our, we call it our digital learning depot. So all of this same email information is linked in our digital learning depot as well. Seesaw has its own column with all the different resources that we put there as well. We offer a lot of live professional development, but we also keep in mind constantly that uh, time is precious, especially in educators' time. We all know that as people in education, right? We can we can address that. So we always want to make sure that we give our teachers live options, but also on-demand options. So we really work to do back to school. As you can see, like Ashley mentioned earlier, we've been using Seesaw for a while. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Digital Learning Depot, <laughs> it's so cute. We like it um, so we really like to, we've been using Seesaw for a while in our district. And so we want to keep rekindling that flame. Because any tool that people have seen for a while, they they don't always recognize the new things. And so we're always trying to showcase and say, this is this new thing Seesaw can do for you, especially at back to school time. When people are setting up their classroom, they're setting up their routines. We strike by the irons hot. We want people to know right when they walk in on day one, this is how Seesaw can help you. Um, we make videos. 
We make on-demand things. We like a back-to-school training and Seesaw is always included. And then we also offer support to go into classrooms and say like, we help their kids get logged in for the first time, especially our K-babies. Um, we help our guest teachers as well. So in our district, we have substitute teachers or guest teachers that can come in when the teacher has to be out. And we show them how to utilize Seesaw because if you've ever been a sub teacher before, I'm going to see some likes on this one. <laughs> You've walked into a classroom before that didn't have any lesson plans for you. And Seesaw has a whole curriculum library for you to choose from. And hallelujah for that. Um, we also want to make sure our teachers are prepared in case there is a non-traditional instructional day. Um, they don't have happen often, but when they do, we want everyone to feel comfortable and confident with using all of Seesaw's applications um, to make their lives easier for sure. And then that is just a quick example of our live PD that we have provided based on Seesaw. Really, we have created this ongoing, never ending live professional development <laughs> bank where when people come to us, there is nonstop options. But I think we might have some linked if we don't. I see, I saw some people ask if we can provide links and resources and we are more than happy to share anything that we have at the end of this presentation because we believe that we're working smarter, not harder. So if we've put the time in it, you are more than welcome to have it as well. And experts in the room, right? Together is better. Yes. So this, we're kind of moving into talking about our Seesaw workshop, which we were so lucky that we got the chance to do this last year because it kind of turned into like our big like project that we were so passionate about. So we got the option, it was kind of mid-year, to host a Seesaw workshop. And it was six sessions over six weeks. So we met weekly after school for two and a half hour sessions. We got to collaborate with colleagues across our district. So we reached out to all of our different schools. And our goal of this workshop was really to showcase strategies for using Seesaw in, and at this time, K-2 to classroom. Because last year we did not have access K to five like we do now. Um, and we really just wanted to utilize that intentional time with them to design instructional activities that were focused around our district initiatives. So in our district, that is a lot of authentic learning, project based learning. And we knew that sometimes it's hard to really take those district initiatives and the tools that you're provided and mesh those two together. Because like Stephanie said, time is precious as a teacher. And we wanted them to have that designated time together, especially with like grade levels, to build those things. So first things first, we really needed to decide who was going to come to this party. Um, so we were very optimistic, but we were really nervous about the time commitment. Um, we are we were very fortunate that at this time we were able to offer stipends through our instructional department. So that was like an added bonus. And so what we did is we kind of went through because as Seesaw administrators for our district, we would get weekly updates of like our top users. So we went to our top users first, and then we also asked for admin recommendations. And we said, hey, who do you feel like would be a great fit for this cohort? It's like a six week commitment. We kind of gave them the option to go every day, every week, because originally when we started the plan, we thought we're going to build the ship, right? We're going to go ahead and start here and build the ship. And then um, we'll have our whole six weeks laid out. We quickly changed that philosophy, though. And we'll tell you why in just a minute. But this was just a great way for us to help teachers to take our district vision and Seesaw and find that connection. We really wanted it to be people, though, that were familiar with Seesaw. And we wanted those people because we wanted to make sure we weren't overwhelming people who hadn't been on Seesaw yet with all of its capabilities, because we're like, we want to make sure we give everybody, meet them where they're at. So we were really looking for our frequent users. So then step two for us, once we knew kind of who we were inviting and who was attending, we needed to gather a little bit of information. So we just sent out this form to all of the people that we had invited and put out some dates. And because we do service the whole district, that means our schools are kind of spread apart. So we didn't want this to be a burden for anybody. We made sure that we found a location that worked for all of our attendees, something neutral in the middle. And then we took the time to gather any comments or concerns that they would have. 
Maybe they're not quite sure what we're looking to do with our workshop. Maybe they have an idea, but we wanted to make sure that we collected all of that beforehand so that we could come up with a plan on our own. Yes. And then once we were in the workshop, we were like, okay, let's go ahead and brainstorm your needs and adjust. And we did. Um, we had the plan that we would build the ship prior to the six weeks starting. And then we quickly decided that the experts were in the room. The educators we invited in were in the room. They were the ones that were ready to implement and get this party started. And so we started with a gallery walk, which Ashley will show in just a second. And then we as you can see, we do so much feedback. We always ask the people in the room, what do you need? How may we help you? We're like Chick-fil-A service here. We're <laughs> like, we want to help you because you are the ones that are working with our babies, right? You're the ones in the classrooms with our kids. We want to make sure that you feel like your needs are being met. And so the feedback form really helped us because at the end of each workshop, we would get their feedback. And then we would immediately, it would be on a Tuesday night, we would do the workshop. And on Wednesday morning, we'd sit down and be like, what did the feedback say? How do we want to plan for next week? So it was very, uh, it was like such the instructional model that we would want to follow in the classroom, right? If we had that much time, but <laughs> we took the feedback from the students and we made a plan from there. What do they need? What do they want? And we made it happen. And they appreciated that as did we. So like Stephanie mentioned, we started with a gallery walk and it really just looked like this picture. We put posters up around the room and gave them each post-it notes. And we just took a minute and we had them answer these questions. What are we currently using Seesaw for? So what are we doing? What are you doing in your classroom? Um, really, that question sparked a ton of conversations because there were so many people already that were like, I had no idea Seesaw could do that or I love that idea. And we were really blown away that it really just kicked it off that way. Um, and then the other one was, what would we like to do? So what do you want to learn? What do you want to know how to do? And then what are you what are you curious to know more about? So those last two questions, we really built our further our future sessions around those two questions. And we left these up throughout our six week whole workshop because we added to it every time we talked about something their curiosity grew. Every time we mentioned something, then they were like, well, we want to learn how to do that. So this was really just our guiding aspect behind our workshop. And this is kind of our breakdown and we will share with you um, the slides from our actual six week workshop because you'll see it was very themed and it <laughs> adjusted to the needs of our participants. So the first week, you know, we have a group of people from across the district who, even though they're part of the same district, they have different school expectations. So the first thing we did is we established as a group some norms and a vision for the six weeks. Because if we're going to ask you for your time, we want your time to benefit you. Um, we spent some time doing a give one, get one, where teachers could share. This is how I'm already using Seesaw in my classroom, but then also hear from a grade level peer who could tell them the same. And that was where the conversation just exploded. Ashley and I were like, wow, we did not even know this was going to happen, but this is quite magical for us. I mean, we just facilitated and they ran with it. Um, and then at the end, we kind of did a brain dump of like some going forward. After that first meeting, we decided we want to go into the second meeting with making some connections with other programs and things we are using as a district. So teachers don't have, you know, we're smarter, not harder. Okay. Then we let them choose their own adventure. So we tell our teachers, we tell our, you know, our staff all the time, let your kids, you know, pick their path, choices and things like that. We wanted to do that for our teachers. We want our teachers to get to choose their own adventure of how they learned that night. So they got to pick their pathway and make a decision about how they wanted to utilize their work time. And the feedback we got about how appreciated they felt was, it was so heartwarming because we're like, they feel appreciated. And that's our main goal here help them learn and help them grow. Um, the third week, we focused a lot on organizing our Seesaw classroom and then making those authentic learning connections because authentic learning is a really big vision for our district. And then on the fourth session, we talked about how to get our families involved, how to make student groups and group in our assignments and activities. We also talked about that QR code generator because we're big in our county about sharing. 
our schools, when you walk down the hallways, there's like student work plastered everywhere. And they were like, well, if we do it on Seesaw, and we're like, wait, it gets better. You can do a QR code on the walls. And then we had admins and principals and district people and parents and families walking down the hallways, watching, you know, their little videos of their, of their kid. And it's because of those multimodal tools in Seesaw, it was just like, thank you so much. Um, also, when you get like-minded people in a room, but they're all coming from different backgrounds, you want to make sure that we all can kind of agree on what a high quality learning experience will include. Because if we're going to create and share activities, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. You know, I mentioned Ashley's my, the neutral to my neon, but so she and I always have to find a common ground. So when we have these people in the room, we're like, what does a high quality work sample look like to you? So that way, when we're building and sharing activities in Seesaw, we're all on the same page. Um, in our fifth one, we focused on modeling. So we became the teachers and we designed a lesson on Seesaw uh, to show an authentic learning PBL style activity and how it can be used in Seesaw. And they were very excited about that. And then they got time to work. At the end of it, every session, they had time to work. And then finally, the sixth week came and we were all very sad. And we were shocked that we were sad because we, we thought we had really bit off a real big thing to chew. And then at the end, we were, it was just so bittersweet because we had learned so much. We had collaborated so well. And we used that time to still design and give the teachers time to work, but also some time to reflect on, okay, what are next steps? Um, you know, Seesaw offers lots of training and support for in-house people to share out. And so we had kind of created a professional learning template for them to build to then share at their own school of kind of their Seesaw journey. And then it was a little bit more personal touch that they could take back to their own elementary school and share. And then this is just, this is actually linked in your handouts. This is the slideshow that Stephanie mentioned, we built throughout our workshop. So you'll see that we have different themes and we tried to make it exciting. It happened to fall during like leak day week. So there's a whole frog theme, but we love a good, exciting we way love to a theme, theme it up. We love a theme. And then here's just a quick picture of what our workshop looks like. You can see in this picture, they're broken up by grade level. So they're getting a chance to collaborate with those like-minded people. And then also our room was set up to where they could really have those conversations. We didn't want it divided. We wanted to feel it to feel like it's a cohesive group. So we were intentional about the setup as well. And then we also asked for feedback at the very end of our workshop. And these are just a few of the quotes that our attendees gave us. So if you want to take a second and read through maybe one or two of these and then if you could type in just any words that stand out to you, we would love to love to see what just stands out to you. Um, we loved reading through these. Our hearts were yes. so happy that they felt like this was valuable. We never want to take a teacher's time and them not feel like it's a valuable experience. So collaboration was a big word for us. Mm -hmm. Any other words that stand out? Yeah, collaboration is a big one. Smarter, not harder. That's always our go-to. Okay. Yes. And I think that's where we've we've always felt most powerful when we can take feedback from our staff and put it into motion. Um, so all that feedback was so helpful for us because then it felt like we had created a safe space for them and then they learned things and then they were reignited and then they could go back to their schools and really make that happen. Um, a big thing in our that in my heart always is making sure all of our students have access to learning. Uh, I, Ashley and I work a lot with our special education teachers and coaches with a lot of their professional learning. We also work really closely with our English language learners. Um, we are always seeking out resources that can support those students. I know Seesaw has a lot for our Spanish speaking students. They have a lot of translation options and the communication tools. And if you have not checked out this webinar, another little plug for the webinar series, because of my 24 hours of service of professional learning this year, I think 20 of them came from Seesaw alone. Um, this is a great series on equity and access. And I feel like as a district person, I want to make sure that we're always helping our SPED and our EL teachers, supporting them with the tools that we have on hand. 
Um, we highlight the tools and features every week in our emails, but we also specifically support them in showing how the multimodal tools can support all learning styles and learning needs. And I feel like, you know, the video and the audio recording options have just been game changers for a lot of our students. Uh, we share the webinars often and promote them, but also we collaborate with our EL and SPED coaches monthly, if not more frequently than that, to say, hey, what do you need from us? How can we support you? What resources can we share out to families in the community so that way they have access? Um, but if you haven't checked out the series, 10 out of 10, great. So not only do we collaborate with our English language learner coaches in our SPED coaches, but we also make it a point to keep kind of everybody in what Seesaw calls that learning loop because we make it a point to make sure that we're up to date on any Seesaw tools or Seesaw features that we then share with teachers. But we also want to make sure that our administrators and our, our instructional coaches are in the loop as well. We know that they have so many moving pieces throughout their day and so many things that they are accountable in keeping up with that this can be like our little way of making sure they're up to date on technology tools, especially Seesaw. So we have set up administrator meetings where we kind of give them a slideshow of this is coming new in Seesaw or this is what Seesaw is capable of. Uh, we also do individual school check-ins. So sit down and meet with our principals and coaches and give them any updates. Or if we see that a building is doing something, we're like, Seesaw would be great for this. We make it a point to mention it to them as well. Uh, we also sit in on a, the renewal review yearly with our superintendent or assistant superintendent and just basically plug to her how much we love Seesaw. So you know how it is when you're making the money decisions, they don't get to see the ins and outs of every classroom. So we make sure to make a point in like, we need this. This is amazing. This is helping our teachers, our students, our families. So we just plug it that way. And then down there at the bottom, it says principals and coaches. So just keeping a constant line of communication because they don't know what they don't know. And we make sure that they know how awesome Seesaw is. And I think, like we've said before, the data speaks for itself. When we started seeing numbers increase and increase and increase, it's like, OK, like what's going on? And so we're like, oh, we are we are igniting this flame. You're like, get ready. It's happening. It's get ready. Put your purple on. Um, so like we said at the very beginning, we never want to leave you in a webinar or training where you're like, well, now what? Like, well, how do I even start? That was all so many things that you you shared with me. So we like to know what's happening next. So we thought you might too. So where could you begin or where do you begin if you are coming in here and you're like, OK, I want to help reignite this flame in my district or my, my classroom or my school, where do I start? I would, we would highly encourage a survey. Um, when in doubt, ask the people, go to the people and ask them what they want and take that feedback and run with it. Because once you have that feedback, you have a connection. You have a personal connection to that person now because you're like, I know what you need and I'm going to help you get there. So we highly recommend a survey to, to gauge interest, to gauge their usage. Some of them may not even know what it is and you think they do. So like Ashley mentioned before, you don't know what you don't know. So just be ready for whatever feedback you get. Um, and it's not personal. It's just they, they you can help them learn and grow along with you. Share. Just keep putting it out there. Just keep putting it out there. Like you're a social media influencer. Just keep putting it out there. Put it in their face. Um, share it in your email blast, share it. Um, if you have an office, display it on the wall, maybe a QR code, uh, keep sharing, keep sharing the features, keep sharing the training. I will tell you a huge piece of our puzzle has been getting teacher feedback and asking the teachers to share because as former classroom teachers, you, we know like teachers want to hear from other teachers. What are you doing? How is this working for you? How can this make my life easier? and more effective and support student learning because that's our main objective is our babies. Um, the third is to model, be the model. In our Seesaw cohort, we did Seesaw lessons with our teachers. You know, show them the features, keep putting those features out there because um, there are always those monthly highlights. There's always those monthly blurbs. If you're subscribed to Seesaw, you're getting those. Um, if you're a pioneer, ambassador, and administrator of Seesaw or Seesaw user, you should be getting some weekly and monthly highlights and ideas and just keep sharing them. 
Um, we share them in a lot of spaces. We have a di that digital learning depot that we share them in. We share them in our weekly emails. And we also share them with our admins and our coaches because we know in-house people can spread that information really well. Um, we will make sure that all the links are shareable for you. Uh, we know the survey was kind of acting wonky for you guys to see, but we'll get that taken care of. And of course, like Ashley mentioned, anything, we are of the mindset that sharing is caring and together we can grow and learn better. And so we always want to make sure that you have access to the things that could help you to grow for sure. Thank you so, so much. Stephanie and I could talk all day long about Seesaw and our journey with Seesaw. So thank you for making it a point to join our session. And truly, if you need anything at all, I saw a couple of people ask for certain like templates that they saw. We would love to share. So our emails are on the screen. If you have questions, if you're curious about something, we are open to collaborating with you. So thank you so much. And I think we're going to answer some questions. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Yeah, Ashley, Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing those, uh, I think, actionable and inspiring approaches to really implementing Seesaw or really any instructional technology effectively as we head into the year. We did get a couple of questions. I rephrased them a bit to be a little bit more general purpose. One that came up was certainly time constraints. Um, so people in different subject areas in different districts may have less time. I think the that that workshop series sounded wonderful but we all know when the rubber meets the road it's about to be back to school i don't have too much time to run maybe that holistic workshop so how might you recommend or what are the like the key pieces if you had less time if you had like one three hour session or maybe even less three one hour sessions what do you think is most important to kind of convey or instill in teachers as we're heading to into the year in your district do you want to, do you yeah, I was going to say, so two things I would think about. Um, first, I would probably survey and see the needs before I started any training, because you don't want to give somebody that something they already know, and then you've already taken away time that you had. And then I would also want to make sure that when I got into the trainings, I gave, like, you could do it piece by piece. So like, if you want to highlight a tool each week in an email, and then it's like a little bit at a time and build it. Um, but I think I would start with saying, what do you need most? Because time is precious and highlighting the tools they need the most. Like a lot of people are ready to say, like, how do I create an activity? How do I access the curriculum library? You know, how do I just put rubber to the road? What were you thinking? I Actually. think, well, that's exactly the path I was going to go down. But at the same time, it, this was an issue for us because there are so many robust things that Seesaw offers that we, we could spend all day long having meetings with these teachers and doing that with them really just what is the need at that moment or what's upcoming that they want to work on and really just focus on what's right in front of you versus like the long game. Cause again, you could go on and on and on. Online webinars have saved us. Mm -hmm. So like we know that people don't have time to be in front of us all the time, but I mean, Seesaw already has a very well established YouTube with like shorts, seven mm -hmm. minute videos or up to 45 minutes or whatever. So I would say also start with sharing those like, hey, you just need this click here. Um, also yeah. on the teacher resources tab of Seesaw, there's tons of quick QR codes and it will take teachers exactly where they need to go. But I will say that Ashley and I, attendance is difficult. Time is difficult. By the time the school year starts, most people have all their professional learning hours and they are not able to commit another minute. Yeah. We totally understand that. But if we had that library there of like, here's here's a place you can go if you need this, that way they know it's there. And if they need more, they come to us. But um, having kind of like yourself. an online an online toolbox where they can access as needed is really mm -hmm. it's substantially helped us. Yeah, that's great. And then one other question that come up that came up that I thought was interesting. I think one thing that makes for not only a successful seesaw implementation but also a successful school year is really that parent engagement piece that family engagement piece so uh could you share maybe some actionable tips for the folks in the audience around how do you help teachers start that school year off on the right foot by engaging and forming relationships with families i think that we just start by being prepared like we make sure when we present we like for the last two weeks we've been doing presentations to get our teachers ready for school 
And we just make sure that we show them the features where they're able to let those parents and guardians into their seesaw classroom. We make sure they're aware of where it is because I think a lot of people just aren't really sure how to get that ball rolling. So if we can provide them the resources and the instruction on how to set that up, then when they have like back to school, meet the teacher or open house, then they can really set that up from the very beginning versus kind of later on in the school school year being like, oh yeah, you can come join. Um, you know how it is when they're signing all the things and signing up for all the stuff, just you slide it on in there and then they're signed up right from the get go. And I think we've used that strategy some. What else do you want to Yes. Add? So a lot of our schools typically have like an open house back to school night. Mm -hmm. And part of the rostering or coming in, you can actually print your handouts and family mm -hmm. logins um, from your Seesaw library once your classes flowed. And so that's a quick handout at back to school night. Um, it's probably something I would have a little QR code up on my screen mm -hmm. when parents walk in and they can scan it. But definitely just print those handouts. You have them in all different languages if needed, and then you can just pass them out at open house or back to school night. And then um, a lot of our schools do contests. So like whoever got the most parents signed up first, you know, gets, we, we do free prizes. Like you get to pick <laughs> the music pass today or you get to have stinky feet pass. So, um, you know, in, incentivize it, right? The most, the school or the, the teachers that got the most parents onto their seesaw classroom gets like an extra five minutes outside or something. Um, but just making it. And then also I feel like once the once you have a teacher or two in your in your school that does it and they see the goodness that it is, because I was a seesaw parent before I was a seesaw yeah. teacher and I loved it. My teacher was sending me pictures of my, my baby in class on the app and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best teacher ever. <laughs> so I feel like once people see a picture of their baby, they're like, I'm in. They're all in. Yeah, yeah that, that social proof and I think inspiration from colleagues yeah. is so important too. like to actually see that working in the classroom yeah. next door mm -hmm. to see the success that you can have in your classroom from that working. It is just that initial kind of getting over that hump of the maybe the logistical part that, that sometimes yeah. can be a barrier. Amazing. Well, that, that was the last question that I grabbed. Um, please feel free, um, as both Ashley and Stephanie mentioned, uh, to reach out if you have additional questions or, or uh, requests, feedback after the session. Um, thank you so much for staying engaged during the session today. So your PD certificate will be emailed to you and all session recordings, including this one, will be available on demand starting August 4th. Uh, if you have time in between sessions, please visit the networking tab to join with other educators from around the world and earn points for the leaderboard. Uh, the top 50 people will win prizes. And also, don't forget to join our closing session today at the end of the day for more giveaways. Um, thank you for being a part of Seesaw Connect 2024. And now for the fun part, we're going to do a giveaway and choose two winners at random to win yes. some Seesaw swag. Awesome. Josh, I did see one more question pop up. Oh, if you don't yeah, mind go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, you had mentioned like if people are hesitant and like, right, there's always resistance, right? There's always people that are like, bah, humbug. Um, so obviously we just keep saturating them in it. And we also keep getting other teacher feedback. Teachers want to hear from other teachers. And we're going to toot Seesaw's form right now and say like they are listening to teachers and making their tool more and more robust for the needs of our students. So I think if you just constantly bring it back to like this is about your student and this is going to make their life easier, which is in turn going to make your life easier, they're going to eventually drink that Kool-Aid and it's going to taste good. But um, I understand, Carlos, that can definitely be um, the elephant in the room. All right, I'm ready for process, Josh. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Ooh. Yay! Congrats, All Erica. Right. So we've got Erica, and then I think someone who may have not entered their name. So we'll try to get to the bottom of that oh, no. uh, and chat with them. We can figure that out as the Seesaw team on the back end and uh, make sure that we get our currently anonymous attendee, a yes. nice uh, yes. Seesaw It's like when your students put in their, their, their fun <laughs> little nickname. <Yeah. laughs> All 
All right, awesome. Thanks so much again, Ashley and Stephanie. And thank you, thank you everybody uh, for attending not only this session, but CSOC Connect 2024. I think it's our global educator community that really makes things uh, fun and inspiring for us on the CSOC team, but really for teachers globally. So thank you, thank you again, and have a wonderful next couple of days. Thank at CSOC you. Connect. Thank you.